Hey guys, Luke here, and today we're going to talk about peptide synthesis. When we talk about this, there's a two-step method and a one-step method, and we're going to go through both, and the reaction mechanisms as well. As you can see, the reaction mechanisms are quite long. Um, obviously, this does relate to a hard mechanism with our peptide bond there. But we've got to give it a go as this is on our course and once you've grasped the mechanism I think uh, you can't really alter this much because it's just a peptide uh, formation. So, as you can see we've got a protected nitro group there which leaves this open to attack. We've got our OH there and uh, air concentrated acid. What happens is we basically remove one of these OHs and a H there to form H2O and um, we're able to do this little mechanism here. We're trying to add a uh, a peptide effectively. I th uh, in fact, that's a uh, amino acid. When we add an amino acid, it attacks from the nitrogen to this uh, double bond over there. That goes through a double um, double headed arrow, and that kicks off this group that we used initially. And then what we get is um, a peptide bond, pretty much, this uh, peptide bond here. Um, and that's obviously formed from removal of that. And then a nitrogen bond coming from there, and obviously losing a H, and that's our amino acid part. We can also do this from a mixed anhydride, using a base this time, and, uh, and this. So... This time it is the chlorine that gets displaced. In this one, you'd have thought the chlorine would have been displaced as well, but that's not the case because we're using an acid, and that can uh, make H2O. In this case, we do lose the Cl and we get HCl instead because we're using a base. Um, and uh, as you can see, I did... I know that you're probably wondering where's this group gone. I did just simplify it and just lost that group. Just forgot about it. It should still be there, just to point that out to you guys. It should definitely still be there. And it's the same for this one as well. Um, but we effectively just do exactly the same thing. And instead kick off a uh, this group instead. A, uh, I don't know what that is. If we kick that off anyway. And in this case we've got the one step. The direct coupling of acid and amide, which obviously just does it in one step, as it says. So we use DCC, which stands for the direct coupling, and we use uh, HOBT as well. I mean, uh, DCC is a molecule, never mind, ignore me. But that obviously just forms the peptide bond straight away. DCC, something to remember, is that. Uh, definitely make sure I remember that. I'm just checking to see if there should be benzene rings or not. No, they shouldn't. It's dicyclohexyl carbodiimidine. Diimide, sorry, should I say. And this is uh, HABT here, as you can see. Definitely something to remember as well. This stops uh, racemization of uh, amino acids. It's a good nucleophile and also a good leaving group when you need to get rid of it. So here's the mechanism for this one-step process. It obviously doesn't look like a one-step process here, but I assure you it is, in inverted commas, just using the um, using what we've got, effectively. So what we do is attack the H as if we were doing this straight away. That makes us get OH minus because the H just uh, falls across. And then we get NH3 plus as well. As a uh, as as a byproduct. This is when we use our DCC. Uh, CY just stands for uh, cyclohexyl. Attacks at the carbon and then we can uh, uh, Weaken one of the bonds, reduce the bond order down from two to one for the nitrogens as well. That makes us have N minus, 
So we've still got the original compound there, minus the H, and now we've got our bound DCC. This is where HOBT comes in, and the negative charge on the nitrogen that we formed uh, then goes to the H of the HOBT or the BTOH, either way. And then that donates the electrons into the um, into the ring there, basically making it BTO minus, as uh, we form a minus charge on the oxygen. After that, we can we've obviously formed a hydrogen there because we've took it from this HOBT. And what we can do there with the BTO is attack at the oxygen. This goes back onto the oxygen and back down to the door bond and then goes across and then that uh, pushes onto the nitrogen. That obviously breaks the bond between the oxygen and the DCC. This forms a, this product here and we also get this product here and we've got a negative charge on this nitrogen again. Now from earlier, remember we made this, which was from our one of our amino acids to make the peptide bond. With that, we can use the negatively charged nitrogen that we formed from our DCC uh, that got broke apart and attack that uh, nitrogen, one of the hydrogens on the nitrogen, and remove that reforming, well not reforming, but effectively making this, which is insoluble in uh, dichloromethane or DCM. Next step is we've basically got our two things now again without the H. Literally all we've done is added the uh, BTO, uh, replaced OH with BTO. But this time the lone pair can attack the uh, double bond oxygen instead and that undergoes the same sort of mechanism we've seen where the electrons push onto the oxygen and push back down and then that removes our OBT. This then forms our almost peptide bond. Um, We've got everything involved there, apart from we have now a H uh, N plus because it's four coordinate, and we can use our B T O minus, which we formed earlier as well, to carry on the process or to deprotonate our nitrogen, should I say? And then finally, that's our product. We finally form the peptide bond. Obviously, we can use different amino acids and a different starting material as well. And uh, once again, I've left out the. Uh, the group there so I'm just going to draw it in why not left-handed again not the best in the world as you guys know that's just supposed to be dash line meaning it's behind and there you go that's basically what happens and BTOH is reformed which is great or HOBT is reformed so it can be used as a catalyst because obviously we can put that back into the reaction so that is the one step and two step mechanisms for forming a peptide bond and next time we're going to be looking at uh, racemic mixtures and how we can synthesize just a single isomer.